I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to Logic Courses. In these modules, I'm going to teach you the basics of working with Logic, as well as various methods for composing, producing, and performing, to give you all the skills necessary to use the software in whatever way you want. I'm assuming you have at least a basic understanding of audio and MIDI, but I'm also aiming to help those who are completely new to music software. The way you approach the course is entirely up to you, and dependent on how quickly you pick up the various techniques along the way. However, I personally recommend going through each module slowly, pausing each one as you go to try out different things in Logic, and then, at the end of a module, practicing everything you've learned in it for at least 40 minutes, following my suggestions and using the provided sessions and worksheets, so that each module has at least an hour spent on it. That way, it's more likely that everything you've learned will sync in properly. Also, if you have any questions, then you can contact me on support at logic-courses.com or you can go to the Producer Tech Forum, where you can discuss issues with other students and myself. This first module is a little different from the others, though, in that I'm going to briefly go over some logic concepts and introduce you to some of the main areas of the software, as well as show you how to set up. So you needn't necessarily practice anything after this module and could just move straight on to the second one where you'll be learning about how to get started with a new session and work with audio samples. After you've booted up Logic then, the first thing you need to do is to set up the preferences. This is essential when any audio software is first launched, so you can tell it where to send audio to, where to get audio from, what MIDI devices and controllers you might be using, what sample rate to work at, if this is something you need to do, most people are fine working at the default rates, and even what the software looks like. Logic actually automatically detects audio and MIDI hardware, so you often don't need to set up the preferences yourself, but it's still a good idea to know your way around them. So let's get started. The preferences are found in the Logic Pro menu, or using the preferences switch here. Once clicked, you can select any of the sub-menu options for a specific area you want to set up, like audio or MIDI. Once the window is open, you have the same set of submenu options, with a further set of tabs for each one of those. So there are a lot of options to set, but most of them you don't need to worry about. Let's start with audio, as this is the one you'll use most. In that section, under the Devices tab, you can see your options for getting audio in and out of Logic. The Core Audio header here is the one to select. Core Audio is the Mac audio driver system and so any connected sound cards or interfaces will have core audio drivers that make them compatible. Clicking on Output Device activates a drop-down list, where you can choose any sound card or audio interface you have connected. If you don't have one yet, then you can just choose Built-in Output and just connect some headphones, or use the Mac's built-in speakers. If you want to record sound using a connected interface, then you make sure it's selected as the input device but we'll cover that more later on. The next option allows you to set a buffer rate. Now, although this is a pretty complex setting to get your head round, it may be important later on in your studio work, especially as you start to introduce more external equipment like firewire devices into your setup. The buffer setting basically defines how much latency your system has. Latency is another term you'll become accustomed to as you go. It's another word for delay, in this case, caused by your computer processing the audio. You probably won't have to change this, as most computers are nice and powerful these days, but at some stage it may be something you need to adjust if problems arise, so that's where you can find it. Other preferences you may want to change are what song opens up when you first boot up Logic. You can find this in the General Options under the Project Handling tab, where you can change it to open up the project you were last working on, or an empty project, or make it do nothing at all. Also, because you may like to personalise how the software looks, in the Display Options, under the Arrange and Piano Roll tabs, you can set a different colour for the background, making it brighter so it's easier to see, or even setting your own colour. You can also use the Colours button at the top here to change the colour of regions in your arrangement, or tracks on the mixer. 
which can be useful to organise your sessions. To do this, just click on a track in the arrangement and then click on Colours and select the one you want. Or click on any region or group of regions and do the same. If you have a MIDI controller, then you may want to set it up at this point. The way you do that differs depending on the type of controller you have and how well it's integrated with the software. Some supported controllers offer automatic integration with Logic, whereby the mixer, instruments and effects all map automatically to the hardware's controls. Whereas some controllers simply offer standard MIDI functionality, where you need to use Logic's own MIDI mapping system to control the software. This is all demonstrated later on in the Remote Controlling of Logic module, but I'll show you the basics of setting up a supported controller now. Under the Logic Pro menu, select Preferences, and then Control Services, and then Setup. A new window opens where you can either manually or automatically set up a control surface. With the controller connected, normally via USB, you can then choose New and Scan All Models. Logic then performs a scan of connected devices, after which it will display them in the window. Once displayed, you can click on the device and then set options such as the input and output ports for MIDI to be sent back and forth over on the left-hand side. If Logic doesn't automatically detect the controller you're trying to set up, then Install can be chosen from the new menu where you can add it manually yourself. For more advanced MIDI routing, you can open up the environment window, but this is quite complex, so we won't deal with this much until the advanced course. Next to the Preferences button, you have the Settings button. Clicking on that brings up a similar submenu from which you can open another window that allows you to view and edit the current settings of the project. The project is what Logic calls the song you're working on. When you save a Logic song, it places it into a project folder, which contains audio files, sample instruments and samples, and any other media being used in the song. The settings of the project can be set from this window. Again, there are loads available, most of which you won't ever need to care about, and some that we'll look at later on in the course, but one example includes the sample rate in the audio list, where you can select any rate up to 192 kilohertz. Sample rate literally means the number of audio samples per second for all digital audio in the session. Setting a higher rate means that any audio recorded will have a larger file size, but also improved quality, although the perceived improvements are often subtle and difficult to detect. 44.1 kHz is the default setting, and this is the rate used on CDs, so it's become the standard. I've always found the quality of 44.1 to be good enough, and have never needed to raise it any higher. But if you want to improve the resolution, then you have the option. As we're dealing with file placement and the project folder in this module, the other options I'll show you here are under Assets. These are where you can select the files that get automatically saved to your project folder. Any samples you use for audio regions will be copied into the project folder as default, and their sample rate converted to match the project if necessary, as a result of these two options. Below that, you also have the option to copy samples from Logic's sampling instruments EXS or Ultrabeat to your folder too. All these options are important if you want to work on your Logic projects on different computers, which may not have the same samples folders. Activating these will make sure all the samples in your song are in the project folder and not being played from a different location. Let's take a look at Logic's layout then. The main area in the centre is called the Arrange window. This is where all audio and MIDI is recorded, and where your song is put together. Hitting play makes the playhead move along the bar ruler, playing any blocks of audio or MIDI, called regions, that are laid out onto the tracks below. In this area, you can copy and paste, split and trim regions to construct your track.